and uh, had those feelings. He um, once uh, said when he was getting ready for uh, a taping with uh, Walter Cronkite and he was getting dressed and he told us, you know, I'm as nervous as I've ever been in my life. And again, I just couldn't, I, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. This man who had spent nearly 40 years in public life uh, on stage, uh, giving interviews, making speeches, and here he's saying that he was as nervous as he had ever been in his life. People sometimes ask me if I exercise any great influence over President Johnson. And I reply, well, I can think of one case when I think I did. Uh, Harry Middleton and Tom Johnson and I came to Texas uh, with President Johnson after he left office, Tom to be his executive assistant, and Harry and I to work on the memoirs, the vantage point, and of course Harry shortly thereafter became director of the LBJ Library. Not long after we got to Austin, I had a major coronary. And uh, in those days, uh, they, they kept you out of action uh, a lot longer than they do now after a coronary. I was in the hospital for a month, and then I was home convalescing for two and a half months. Wasn't even allowed to go to work. When they finally said that I could uh, go to work halftime, uh, the first thing we did was uh, to uh, call out to President Johnson at the ranch and uh, say that we'd like to come out uh, the following Saturday and visit with him and talk about the memoirs because uh, we'd pretty well put them on the on the back burner uh, while I was con con the first thing uh, we did was um, uh, make an appointment with President Johnson to go out to the ranch uh, to uh, talk about the memoirs which had been pretty well put on the back burner all this time I was home, uh, I hadn't gotten a haircut. And the day before we were supposed to go to the ranch, I looked in the mirror and I thought, oh, I better get a haircut. And my children said, oh, no, Dad, no, no. That's, this, this was in 1969, remember. And they said, oh, uh, long hair's in. That's, it's, you, you, you don't want to get a haircut. Your hair's just right. So I just decided, well, I'll, I'll let it go for the time being. So we went out to the ranch, Harry Middleton and I, and we were sitting under the live oaks uh, talking about the memoirs. And uh, President Johnson looked at me and uh, sort of curiously, and he said, Robert, your hair's getting a little long, isn't it? And uh, just sort of as an offhand remark, I said, well, Mr. President, that's so you won't confuse me with those short-haired bastards in the Nixon White House. And he looked at me and frowned. And, said, short-haired bastards? And I said, yeah, you know, Ehrlichman, Haldeman, Ziegler, uh, all those people in the Nixon White House. He didn't say anything, and um, I didn't say anything more. But the next time I saw the president, his hair was creeping back down over his collar, and it kept getting longer and longer. I suppose that's influence over, uh, just stopping it longer and longer. LBJ was a great tease. Uh, shortly after I went to work for him in the White House, uh, he invited some of his uh, aides to come have lunch with him in the family dining room. And I was fortunate enough to be included in that group, seven or eight people. We were sitting there eating and talking and uh, sort of out of the blue, uh, the president looked down the table at Jack Valenti and he said, uh, well, Jack, I hear you had a party last night at your house. And Jack said, uh, yes, Mr. President, uh, I'm sorry you couldn't make it. And the president uh, uh, feigned ignorance of the whole thing. And he said, uh, well, I didn't, didn't know. The first thing I heard about it was last night.